My name's Dominic Scherer and I'm the composer on The Missing. Dominic Shearer is a creative, intuitive and refreshingly contemporary composer. He's also brilliant at orchestrating his own scores. He'd also had a fantastic working relationship with Tom Shanklin, the director of The Missing, before this point. He was a natural choice to take on the challenge of scoring this piece. The immediate difficulty, potentially, of other music is how, how do you reflect this ultimate trauma for a parent of losing their child. Ole! It's a moment that happens already quite early on in episode one when Tony realizes his son has disappeared. This is a moment of emotional numbness almost. So his head fills with almost a kind of sine wave, a tinnitus sound. I experimented with creating this in different ways and ultimately we recorded some glass harmonica, we played wine glasses and pitched them up just to create this sort of sound of nothingness. It was a moment where, you know, it was meant to underline moments of real crisis for these, um, but it was also an incredibly bold choice. I think that's something that I would r say very definitively about bon Dominic's score. Tom said, this story is a little bit like what happens in in the life cycle of butterflies. They start with eggs, larvae, they turn into caterpillar, then there is a metamorphosis into the actual butterflies. And I found that quite inspiring in a way. And I started to write this theme called butterflies, which reflected this metamorphosis which we also have in the story. Then I started to do these transformations of the same theme and I named them all after existing species of butterflies. The Missing is a detective story, but it's also a story about one event that ripples out into the lives of so many characters. There are moments of stillness um, within this piece, but there are also moments of narrative propulsion. And one of these moments is, for instance, the end of episode one, where the father and the detective are about to finally make the first breakthrough in this case after 11 years. At this key moment, Dominic's score propels us into this moment, but also by its nature, dramatizes the way in which all this event ripples out into the lives of so many people. We recorded all these instruments in various places. Um, some of it we recorded here at my studio, and then I always record almost everything else at Angel Studios in Islington, London, my favorite studio, where we recorded some of these stranger elements and also our string orchestra. Some of the cues are, are quite big and are kind of, you know, driving the story in a, in a more classic thriller style, really. A lot of manipulation of those sounds happened also during the mix and Jake Jackson, the mix engineer, had a, a good insight into the story and could shape the mix in a way that was, you know, conducive to the story rather than just sort of making it a good sounding mix and we were keen to twist a lot of these sounds so you don't quite know where they come from, where they're going. What's unusual in the way that Dominic approached the scoring of this production was the way in which he allowed big moments of expansive scoring, almost moments of catharsis that allowed us to understand what the characters were feeling at that moment, to sit alongside more minimalist, pared down moments of almost sound design. So for instance, in the same episode, you had the expansive moments where the father is looking for his son in the night alongside people celebrating a football win, along with the, the immediate moment when the father experiences the loss of his son where you have that bold tinnitus sound come in. That, I think, gave this show a very unique identity. Missing is riven by the dynamic between hope and despair and ultimately, in the face of much despair, what the score gives us is an elegiac note of hope. 
that can resonate with us and stay with us after the show has ended. Thank you.